This is the growth strategist Aldana Ambler with your tip of the week in growing mid-sized companies. And today I want to make an observation about people that are getting pushed around during negotiations. And one of the reasons it happens is that you know a lot of folks are tight on cash and they don't have the time or the energy that they need. So you have to go into some negotiations and then you're in trouble. So let me just give you some thoughts about it. All right, so I'll start with an example. You know, I, a friend of mine, Jane, you know, she is, runs a service firm, and they really bend over backwards to take care of clients, and they've got a good process, but she's starting to feel like it's a little too labor-intensive, so she spent a lot of time and money, frankly, developing, you know, a process, a package, merchandise, in other words, productizing it, which is very exciting. And so she's spent the money to protect her intellectual property, and she's done a lot right. But can you imagine what it's like when she's feeling like doesn't have time or energy, and now she's spent all her money on productizing? What happens when she starts negotiating with the licensees, or the distributors, or the other people? And it's almost like they have radar to sense that she doesn't have the money, and she's desperate, and they feel like they're in control. So I, I couldn't help you know myself, I guess it's the consultant in me, and I spoke up and I said to Jane, this is just not okay, and I started to talk with her about it. And sent her out to some of the franchise expos, and she thought it was nuts because she wasn't trying to franchise. But you know she does have a product, and seeing the value of what she has to offer was going to be important. You know, well, she comes back and she was raving, you know, ranting and raving about how wonderful it was because she walked from exhibit to exhibit to exhibit and could see the dollar value that people were putting on, you know, having procedures all written out and being able to make money and what's the value of the intellectual property and some folks that, you know, just wanted to have something to copy and use who never had a good idea in their life, an original idea in their life, you know, they're not going to wait for that. They want to have a good business based on somebody else's good idea. And the whole concept of having somebody else pay you to do it your way. So she came back re-energized with that realization that if you've done all that, it's worth something. And that helped her negotiate better. Uh, you know, I've noticed that when people are actually trying to do franchises, the same thing happens. Um, you know, when you really do your research about the value of what you have, a good deal is going to be expecting the entrepreneurial people that want to leverage and piggyback off on what you've done to pony up some money. You know, to, you know, they have to be showing their share of investment. And if they would nickel and dime you in the beginning and not see it's their turn to be bringing some money to the dance, they're probably not going to be very good partners later if they're going to constantly ask for more and more and more right from the beginning. It's a good reminder, even when you're cash tight, what did you bring to the negotiation in all the investments you've made, all the IP you have, all the legal services you've already paid for, that all counts. Don't let the fact that you're cash tight now interfere with you negotiating fairly on behalf of the future enterprise and yourself. This is the Growth Strategist, Aldana Ambler, with your Growth Strategy Tip of the Day.